Yesterday, President Biden issued an executive order that aims to safeguard against threats imposed by artificial intelligence. It is the strongest set of actions any government in the world has taken against the technology to date. Despite that, experts such as Dr. Joy Bolam Weenie are sounding the alarm about the underlying ways AI is designed to exclude or excode people of different races, genders, and more. Those themes are explored in her book, Unmasking AI, My Mission to Protect What is Human in a World of Machines. Dr. Joy joins us now. Thank you so much for coming on the show. So you talk about your time as a grad student at MIT, and during that time, you discovered something that was really concerning when it came to this AI face tracking technology. Tell us about what that was and why it helped you to decide you needed to write a book about it. Absolutely. So here I was, a grad student at MIT. I'm in the epicenter of innovation. I'm working on a school project that uses face tracking technology. And I realized it wasn't actually tracking my face consistently. It happened to be around Halloween at that time. So I had a white mask in my office. I put the white mask on and the white mask was detected mm -hmm. instead of my dark skin face. And that's what led me to asking questions are computers neutral? Was this just my face? Or was this indicative of a larger pattern? And we've been seeing some of that play out lately in the news with black faces that are being misidentified by using AI. Absolutely. You have the case of Portia Woodruff, for example. She was eight months pregnant when she was falsely arrested due to AI-powered facial recognition misidentification. She was sitting in a holding cell reported having contractions. When they finally let her out, she had to be rushed to the emergency room. And here we have an example of not just one person being ex-coded, but two people, her and her unborn child. You're saying that that would be a lot less likely happening to a white woman. Or a white man, you know? And when you've seen the people who've been falsely arrested by facial recognition technology systems, they have been predominantly black people. And you write, if the AI systems we create to power key aspects of society, from education to healthcare, from employment to housing, mask discrimination and systematize harmful bias, we entrench algorithmic injustice. We swap fallible human gatekeepers for machines that are also flawed but assumed to be objective. What are some real world examples of these algorithmic injustices and who do they most likely harm? Uh, yes, yeah, so they tend to um, harm those who have already faced some type of ism. Think of an ism as being uh, embedded in technology. So let's look at hiring. You actually had Amazon scrap a hiring tool because it was biased against women. If you had a women's college uh, listed right on your resume, you weren't getting through uh, to the next round. And so you see these algorithmic gatekeepers reflecting the gatekeepers we've been traditionally I used to. Yesterday, we saw President Biden actually issue this executive order when it came to using AI for devastating weapons or, or cyber attacks. Do you feel that the government is doing enough? I think the government is starting to take the steps in the right direction. Ultimately, we need legislation. So the executive order is on path there. So I commend the effort. And I also commend the effort in that it's based on the principles articulated in the AI Bill of Rights blueprint that was issued last year. And among those principles was safeguarding people from algorithmic discrimination, making sure that AI systems are safe and effective before they're used. So again, I do think this is progress and there is more to be done. And anything that down the road, you're saying you should be mindful of this, you should be looking at this. Absolutely, so we've been looking at the expansion of facial recognition scans at airports. If you're a US citizen, you do have the right to opt out. You can say no, but when an agent tells you to just step up and scan your face, you might think it's the default. So understand there's a right to refusal. People like me who are looking at AI from the outside, it, it feels like it's sudden and it's all of a sudden infiltrating our lives with regard to movies and, and music. How can we protect ourselves, the average Joe Schmo? I think what's important is to share your story. And that's what I show in Unmasking AI. It was speaking up about my experience of coding in a white mask. This wasn't because I had a technical background, which I do, or that I have an MIT PhD, but I had the courage to say, 
what's happening is wrong and other people can be harmed. And I think that's something we can all do. I really believe if you have a face, you have a place in the conversation about AI because it shapes all of our lives. Dr. Joy Bolamwini, we thank you so much for coming on. Want to let our viewers know Unmasking AI, my mission to protect what is human in a world of machines is now available wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.